Hi there, Chrissy again with part three on this domestic violence reporting and prevention brief. Um, so we just finished up talking about these key responsibilities. I told you one of them is very different than the other. So think about that as we go through this brief. So our family advocacy staff at Fleet and Family um, again, we have people that work in rehabilitation services, and we also have people that work just specifically with victims. I want to also lay out that um, a victim of domestic violence um, does not have to be a beneficiary to receive services from Fleet and Family for domestic violence. And we have the, the Family Justice Center, which is in downtown San Diego. Um, it's a civilian facility, but we do have a Fleet and Family representative in that building to help with domestic violence victims. So we kind of work in prevention, awareness, reporting, um, any kind of victim support, um, any kind of intervention that might need to be laid out. And then we work with the command for offender accountability, or if you want to call it an accuser. Um, accountability okay and we also want to make sure that the response is appropriate and consistent so also at Fleet and Family um, I want to take some time right now to say that all of us if we know of any domestic violence or we suspect of any child abuse we are required by law to report that so remember when you talk to someone that 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 should be aware you should be aware that that does happen there are other people who within the Navy who have um, or mandated reporters and uh, your CO and then within your command your ombudsman is also a, a required reporter if they know of any incidences of domestic violence or child abuse. So again your, your commanding officer, your command family advocacy program point of contact is um, the one you should reach out to to make sure that your commanding officer has good control and accountability for this program. Um, again, they are going to make sure that there is offender responsibility, prevention, community awareness, that there is consistency in their reporting, and they do are they are a voting member on the IDC. NCIS and security, that is someone else you can report to for additional help and any issues that you may have. Um, they will provide a prompt response. They're going to act similarly to law enforcement in these um, situations. Um, they'll work in collecting evidence too. So I, I don't collect evidence. I don't think your CEO is good at that. So if they need to um, help with any of that, they can do that as well. Um, and then the next one is your medical treatment facility. These are, um, this is important in kind of a crisis response. Um, so anyone, if you're, if you're physically injured, they should go to medical. And then they can also refer out um, later down the road. So you think of someone who is having um, physical harm to themselves, they have imminent danger, medical probably needs to be involved as well. All right, and if you know anything about our chaplains, you probably guessed, Chaplains are the ones that are different than the other key players. They're their own special entity because they are the only entity within the Navy that has 100% confidentiality. This means you can go and talk to them if you are a victim and they will not refer out or report um, that you can go and reach out to them for, um, for help, for referral services, um, for understanding a little bit more about domestic violence and let the, and you can feel comfortable opening up to them without them needing to make a report. So that's important to um, know who your, your chaplain is and make sure you know that you can refer to them, okay? Also, if you are in a situation where you know of someone who is possibly maybe, but is not opening up, maybe you can just say, hey, I've talked to the chaplain before, you know they have 100% confidentiality, just go down and see if there's something they can do for you, just ask some questions, and maybe this is a good avenue for someone who's completely closed off to open up. All right, so let us know if you have any other questions about that reporting process and who the key players are. The next thing I'd like to talk about is FAP, the FAP reporting process. Um, unrestricted and restricted reporting, they're a little different. Now, sometimes people confuse the two. I realize the names are uh, can sometimes feel like you know what you're saying when you don't know what you're saying. Um, no one except for 
a someone who works in family advocacy can take a restricted or unrestricted report. So basically, if you come to me as an educator and you say, hey, I would really like some help with services, um, Joe Smith down the road, hit me across the face and then later drag me down the alley, but I wanna have help, but don't tell anybody Joe Smith did this to me. I would say, I'm so sorry. I wish you wouldn't have, you know, I'm gonna have to help you. I'm going to need to do what I need to do to make sure you're in a safe position. Um, and uh, this is just what I have to do legally. Um, if you know that somebody's getting ready to open up to you as well, you can also stop them and say, this is what has to happen later if you tell me everything that I think you're going to tell me, um, and then give them the option to decide to disclose or not. So I'm going to read these again, so sorry, but I, again, I don't wanna mess them up. I wanna make sure that they are legally and, and delivered correctly. So an unrestricted report allows a, an adult victim and all child victims of domestic abuse to pursue an official command or criminal investigation of the alleged incident. This option supports effective command awareness, prevention programs, and law enforcement or criminal justice actions that maximize accountability and offer prosecution as appropriate. So that kind of means we're gonna release the hounds. You told it, it's out, it's not going back in. Whereas a restricted reporting, so think about being confined, allows only adult victims the option, so not children, only adult victims, the option of reporting the incident to a specified individual without initiating the investigative process or notification to the victim's or the offender's command. So this means I can come in and say, I feel like I am the victim of a domestic abuse, but I don't want to tell you any more about it. I just want to seek services for myself. Now, I actually can't do that because I have children in my home. So that's the other hang up too, okay? Um, so know that that's an option for people who are worried about reaching out. All right, that's it for three. I'll see you in section four. We're gonna talk about prevention and resources.